Okay, let us wait 10 seconds for uh, the students. I think it's some reason related to the agreement of being recorded or something like that. se non lo fa rientrare ah ok voi avete chiesto e vi faccio dopo vi do l'accesso forse non lo Credo che è questo. Ah, ecco. Ok. Pavani is now attending and we are recording, so everything is ok. We start now talking about differential kinematics. Sì, grazie. Uh, we start now uh, talking about differential kinematics. The same uh, uh, file, the same slides, and the same chapter of the textbook talk, uh, talks also about statics. And we will see that they are strictly connected. Those two concepts are strictly connected. But le let us now focus on uh, the differential kinematics that relates the way the joint velocities are um, mapped in a linear and angular and a factor velocity. Basically, if this is a rotational joint, its velocity is basically rotation around its rotation axis. And you can notice that the, velo the linear and angular velocity of the end effector are clearly affected by this one. But now, linear and angular velocity should be thought in the Cartesian space. Okay. So clearly, the velocity change depend, changes depending on the configuration of the robot. Because this vector is always in Cartesian space. If I change the first joint and I move the second, the vector goes in another direction. So we should uh, find a way to mathematically represent this uh, intuitive concept. And we will see that uh, the mathematical instrument that we will develop is the geometric Jacobian. Actually, the geometric Jacobian, together with the analytical Jacobian, the Jacobian is really uh, the main concept in all these uh, robotic courts. If you understand the role of the Jacobian, uh, half of the of the of the courts uh, is here okay so before uh, this is the statics we will discuss later so what is the 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 the, the geometric jacobian and how we are going to quantify it we have seen already direct kinematics and we have seen that I developed a way to systematic compute this 4x4 four four homogeneous uh, transformation matrix. I do know I'm able to compute the rotation from the end effector to the zero frame and the position of the end effector expressed in the zero frame. The last line, the last row 
is constant, is 0, 0, 0, 1 by definition. Now, I do want to compute this matrix that will have always six rows, but the number of the columns will be the number of the degrees of freedom of my robot. And then we will see, we will build actually this equation, those two equations, and finally the Jacobian J. Now, the first equation, the equation that now is underlined, tells us that there is a, a linear mapping from Q dot. Q dot is uh, the time derivative of Q. The time derivative of a vector is the vector where each element is the time derivative of the corresponding element. So this is basically the vector with the velocities of the joint. Okay? So Q dot is mapped into the linear, this is only the linear and the factor velocity by means of a matrix. And now, the, oh, okay, the subscript P uh, denotes that is positional matrix that is configuration dependent. It will be function of Q. It's very easy to see why, and then now I, I just make first the definition, and then we will discuss about those matrices. And then uh, the angular velocity is also related to Q dot symbolically by uh, a function with the same dependency from the uh, configuration denoted with a subscript O for orientation. The geometric Jacobian is obtained by stacking together while putting one on the top of the other the two Jacobians of position and orientations. And we will denote with V subscript E the linear and angular velocity of the end effect. Depending on the situation, I may talk about uh, velocity and uh, the meaning is uh, linear and angular. Okay? So just pay attention to the fact that this vector is a six-dimensional vector, but the unit measurement of the first three is meter seconds, and the unit measurement of uh, the second three elements is radian seconds, okay? It's not homogeneous in the unit measurement. However, Q dot depends on what kind of joint I'm considering. So it could be radian seconds for rotational joint and meter seconds for prismatic joints. We will build uh, this uh, Jacobian during our lessons and we will build uh, a MATLAB function with input Q and output the matrix J. As I told you, in the end or during the, the course, I will give you uh, my version of the code, a working version of the code in case uh, you didn't finish uh, yours, and this will be the, the syntax of, of the function. In order to compute the geometric Jacobian, we first need uh, to increase our mathematical background by studying three concepts that should be new for uh, the students of um, computer science, so informatica, and uh, shouldn't be new for mechanical engineering, but we are repeating as well those concepts for, for all, okay? The velocity of a point, so this is uh, a basic concept, but uh, let us uh, start from the beginning. This is just a point P, 
moving with respect to a we can call it inertial frame or world frame or base frame or fixed frame the concept is this frame is fixed we ignore the movement of the earth and this is fixed okay so it works as an inertial frame this point p is moving well its uh, velocity is basically given by the limit of uh, uh, delta t going to zero of the incremental displacement divided by the delta t, the increment of time. This is the definition of velocity. And we will denote it with dp on the t. Okay? Now, the p dot is tangent to the here is written trajectory actually it's tangent to the path this is an error uh, we will uh, define the difference between path and trajectory in another lesson and it's uh, it's uh, a, a stupid mistake that i made but this is tangent the vector p dot so p dot is aligned with this vector here that is denoted with the t here okay it can be demonstrated that we are not going to do it now, of course. Okay. What is the velocity, the linear velocity of a point in rotational motion? I'm interested in rotational motion for obvious reason, because when I have a rotational joint, for example, here, my elbow, this is the end effector, I, I I keep still all the joint except this one, and the movement uh, is clearly a movement around a circle of the end effect. Okay, so this is the reason why we are studying specifically the velocity of a point in a rotational motion. Okay, so now uh, the position after delta t can be written as uh, the increment delta alpha of the, where alpha is uh, uh, the angle. Z is uh, a unit vector that is uh, orthogonal to the plane where position and velocity is line multiplied by, um, uh, sorry, cross multiplied by the vector position P. Okay, so this is the, the draw of the relationship among those uh, vectors. P dot is the limit of uh, delta t going to zero. So the, numer the numerator is this one divided by delta t. And if I make the computations, this is uh, alpha dot because delta t can be no, coupled with this one. This is uh, alpha dot multiplied cross vector of uh, z and p and so i can define an angular velocity omega this is the greek letter omega that is obtained multiplying the unit vector z by alpha dot pay attention on the difference between bold face and normal font t is normal font because it's a scalar is the time Delta T is a scalar, is the time. P, Z, and omega are three by one vector. And also alpha dot is a scalar. Okay? It can be demonstrated that the vector P dot is tangent to the circle in P, in the point of interest. If I don't remember the cross product, this is a, just a, a remind of the cross product. You can uh, uh, memorize the resulting direction of the vector in uh, different ways. You can have uh, the right hand rule where you have uh, first mal uh, times the second equal the solution. So, and then 
you can memorize that the, um, the solution sees the first superimposing the second in a counterclockwise. Okay, you can have your uh, mnemonic rule as you want in order to memorize. I mean, you can also do it with the left hand because X, Y, and Z is, is the same. And this is the same as X, Y, and Z. Okay, so uh, the A is X, B is Y, and C is Z. And this is the truth. Now, the numerical value of C, I'm uh, sorry, the norm of C graphically is the area of uh, the um, um, rhombo, uh, is the area of this region that is confined by the two vectors, okay? And so clearly, if the A and B are collinear, it is zero, the results of the cross uh, product. Okay, this is just to remind this operation denoted with this. Okay, so now let's see something new. Okay. Grazie, sono molto contento di questo strumento. Voi che ne pensate? Io diciamo devo mettere la regola che non finisco la lezione finché non ricevo due o tre commenti o domande, va bene? Allora, riproviamo. Che ne pensate? Utile. Bravo. Allora, abbiamo detto pagina 8. Ok. We do know that Given a rotation matrix, the multiplication of the rotation by its transpose gives the identity matrix. I can then compute the time derivative of this relationship. Now, the time derivative of a matrix is a simply the matrix where each element is the time derivative of the, of the element, okay? And uh, it can be demonstrated that uh, I do have the same rules uh, as for the scalar, the multiplication of two functions. The time derivative is given by, if I have uh, uh, at e multiply g, and I want co to compute the time derivative of this one. This is equal to the f on the t multiplied g mul multiplied g plus f multiplied the g on the t. And this is exactly what we are having here. We should pay attention on the fact that I did not change the order of the multiplications. Here, I may have uh, 
revert it and say that, for example, uh, f, I don't want f here, I can put it here because it is a scalar and it's the same, the result is the same. With matrices, we cannot move around the matrices. So it means that this is the uh, time derivative and of course the right hand side of the equation is zero because the time derivative of a constant of the identity matrix is zero. Okay, so let me erase this one. Okay, I do define uh, this matrix S as R dot multiply R transpose, and it can be easily seen that uh, this is uh, the transpose of S. Okay, uh, I don't think we need to do it, but okay, let's do it. Uh, uh, sorry. R, R dot transpose, I need to transpose, this is equal, I have to revert the order of the matrix multiplication and transpose each. So this is R dot multiply by R transpose, okay? That is exactly S. So clearly I have Clearly, I have uh, that this equation is satisfied. Actually, this is uh, the definition of antisymmetric matrix. And we will see why this is uh, satisfied. Uh, we does have that uh, r dot is equal s multiplied by r where s as as input an angular velocity vector now this comes simply by the fact that i left multiply this equation by r i write multiply this equation by let me let me do it i have that s is equal r dot r dot r transpose and so in order to in order to uh, isolate r dot i have to write multiply by its in the, the inverse of transpose and so here i have s r is equal r dot okay now what is uh, left uh, a little bit uh, uh, sorry coming from the from the sky here is the fact that here i have uh, the angular velocity because any antisymmetric matrix has uh, actually this structure so s equal zero on the diagonal I know that it has a three by three, uh, it is a matrix three by three by its definition, okay? So it cannot be nothing else than three by three. And here I have uh, a generic element S12. In order to be antisymmetric, antisymmetric means exactly, exactly that it needs to satisfy this equation. Here I should have minus S12. Here, if I have S13 minus S13, S23 minus S23. So it means that here I have uh, the same element with the opposite sign, okay? So the element uh, of coordinates of uh, position one, two is uh, uh, the same in norm as the element in position 2, 1, but with opposite sign. This is just by definition of uh, antisymmetric. What is a little bit uh, that I left uh, a little bit 
coming from the sky or the dogmatic because it, it would take a little bit of time is that actually those elements of the matrix are the component of the angular velocity here there is omega x with opposite sign in the two symmetric uh, anti-symmetric positions y here and z here okay this is the time derivative of a rotation matrix And we now make a simple example. Let us compute a rotation. Let us give an, a rotation of alpha around Z. So this is elementary. And let us compute the angular velocity. Let us compute the angular velocity. I know that uh, if the two frames are uh, after uh, after a elementary rotation of z of alpha around z, I do know that the two frames are related by this rotation matrix. Okay, this is the elementary rotation around z because. Uh, Z represented in the other frame is a zero, zero, 001. It means that uh, it is unchanged. And uh, those are the elements of the rotation of the plane uh, of angle alpha that we already saw. Now, what is the operation that I have to do? Well, basically, I, I do know that uh, S is equal uh, R dot multiplied R transpose. So I need to compute a dot symbolically. And this is, uh, sorry, this is uh, the time derivative of cosinus of alpha. I, I hope I don't have to, do, to go into the detail. The, the, the time derivative, uh, this is the derivative of uh, a function of a function. So the time derivative of cosinus is minus sinus. And the, time, and the time derivative of alpha is alpha dot, okay? Of course, here I have zero because it's the time derivative of constant. And this guy here is the transpose of this, okay? This is R transpose. I make my nice matrix multiplication let me do the matrix, just one element, the multiplication of one element. I'm sure that you all remind matrix multiplication. Matrices will be everywhere in this class, already, already are. So uh, this should be really, so this should be really uh, a common operation, but let just me do the computation of, for example, uh, let me compute uh, this element here. Or uh, this is the element uh, 1, 1. Okay. So in order to compute this element, I need to make the product 
between the first line and the first column and let me just do this product this is so s11 is equal minus alpha alpha dot sinus alpha cosinus alpha plus alpha dot cosinus alpha times alpha plus zero. Okay. Equal zero. So now it means that uh, this is uh, my S matrix. And if I look at the definition of the S matrix, I know that uh, omega X is uh, here. Here and here is the same and is zero. Omega Y here, here, and this is zero. And omega Z is here. So the angular velocity is a vector which, shall, which has only one component around the direction of rotation. We are computing the angular velocity here. Those two frame is simply rotating on the plane so the angular velocity is a vector that is aligned with the directional rotation of a certain amplitude that depends how fast I'm rotating. Okay? Just to, to, to visualize a little bit and to understand. Now we are able to compute the, the, the time derivative of rotation matrix. Okay? Well, it follows that uh, the, the matrix S can be used in order to compute the cross product. So if I need uh, to write equations and I need a compact representation of uh, the cross product between two vectors, I can use this notation. Okay, we notice this and we will use later on. Okay, now let us see the time derivative of a point P expressed in two frames. And let me just, let me just uh, upload here. Okay, so I start uh, by the relationship that uh, we already saw. Uh, first of all, uh, let us pay the attention that P is constant in frame one. So this is P, this is the frame one, X, Y, and Z, frame zero, X, Y, and Z, and I do know that uh, this vector P in frame zero can be obtained by summing the displacement of frame one respect to zero and then the position of P in frame one. However, position of P in frame one is expressed in frame one and I need uh, to represent it in frame zero. So I do know that I need to multiply by the rotation matrix, okay? Now, 
I want to implement uh, the time derivative of this uh, relationship and uh, let us do it together. It's very, it's very easy and here I have uh, much more of what I need. So I need to compute the time derivative of everything. Now, this is given by p dot in frame zero. Just one moment because uh, I have uh, a floating object here. Ah, I can put it. Okay, so this is p dot frame zero is equal o dot one zero plus. Now I do know that I okay, point one plus uh, uh, one zero p one. Okay, uh, very simply, let us have a look at this second term. This is the time derivative of uh, p expressed in, expressed in frame one. And clearly, since by assumption, p is constant in frame one, this is zero, okay? Because you use it as uh, a... Um, assumption then p dot zero equal plus we already studied the time derivative of rotation matrix so this is given by one uh, one zero p one okay Now, this is left unchanged because the, vo the, the velocity of P expressed with respect to frame zero is affected, of course, also by the velocity of frame one. So this term here, I mean, is here. We, we, we cannot simplify, we cannot erase it, it's here. And then the contribution of this other term here is given by, I can notice that this one can be written as R1 expressed in frame zero because this is a rotation matrix that represents P1 in frame zero. And this is a vector product. This is uh, the angular velocity of frame one with respect to frame zero expressed in frame zero, okay? Basically, this equation is quite simple. If we have a look at the, the disk, the, the analogic disk, I, I, I assume that you all know what is this object okay so now what is the angular velocity of this guy here of the rigid body the angular velocity is uh, omega one with respect to zero the origin of the two frames is the same and then you start making rotating the disk so the disk rotates at a strange velocity of 33.5 revolution a minute and this is also the way you label this disk this is a, a 33 giri in italian and uh, the unit measurement uh, is kind of strange is a revolution minute so let us modify in a radian seconds ah sorry okay let us modify it in in radian se uh, in radian seconds <laughs> 
di nuovo il frame scusate voi che vedete ah no voi vedete bene and it's uh, 3.5 radian seconds now let's see this is a vector with uh, three component and as i said uh, i mean the rotation uh, around a certain axis the, its angular velocity is aligned with that axis and the amplitude is in this case uh, we know is uh, uh, 3.5 radian seconds now this is the vector omega expressed in frame uh, uh, zero and this is uh, let us compute the position of the head la testina the small head here from uh, the beginning so the the the, the point the um, farthest point from the origin to okay to the origin we know that uh, the diameter of a disc the, and sorry the, the radius of a disc is 30 centimeters it means that we can easily apply the equation and we have that the linear velocity with the small head goes from zero when okay i'm here to one meter seconds when i'm here okay it's just an application of uh, this relationship in order to better focus in our mind okay now why we are developing all these tools because our purpose is clearly to understand how the velocities of the rigid bodies are related to one each other by considering that each joint is contributing to the velocities of all the joints or the rigid bodies following it okay and uh, with my hands i'm making a movement from the base to the end effect and actually we will see that there is a kind of a propagation a composition of velocities so each joint give a contribution to the linear and angular velocity of the end effect and now we are just developing the bricks the mathematical bricks in order to be able to compute in the end the linear and angular velocities that's the same as we have done with the direct kinematics but related to velocities okay but we are building our mathematical tools in order to compute okay so now our aim now is compute linear and angular velocities of frame i as function of the previous one a systematic way to compute the velocities this is our purpose now the linear velocity this equation is a little bit apparently complex but if i explain uh, the meaning you will see that is not more difficult than the head on the analogic disc musical disc okay conceptually is not different let us see a little bit the equation now position of a frame i is equal to the position of frame frame i minus one plus the relative displacement expressed usually in i minus one because it's constant in that frame a chest okay so back from origin uh, the position of a frame i when i say uh, see original frame i is equal to the position of the previous one plus the displacement okay the displacement is given by the displacement from i minus one to i here there is a comma this is notation that we are going to use expressed in frame i minus one but then since those two are expressed in frame zero because there is not upper script i need a rotation matrix to represent the vectors in the same frame 
Well, this is exactly the same as we have seen here. This is exactly the same, okay, with a different notation, because now we want to represent it for a generic frame. Conceptually, it's the same. The time derivative is thus given by the time derivative of the origin of frame i minus 1. Then, here I have the velocities of frame i with respect to i minus 1. This is the term that was 0 here. This term here now is not zero anymore because the two frames can move one with respect to the others. And then I have uh, the angular velocity cross product the displacement. Conceptually is the same as we have done it. So I have the contribution of three terms. Okay. The three terms are given by the, veloci the velocities of this point here plus the relative velocities plus the contribution of the angular velocity that gives a tangent contribution plus this one. Okay? So conceptually it is the same um, plus this one. Conceptually is the same as we have seen, but with a different notation, because we need now to write it for a generic frame, because we are going to build it for a generic structure. Okay, that's the way now it appears more complex than the previous case. The angular velocity, now you are going to see something that is apparently much more complex. But conceptually, the angular velocity is simpler. So, without uh, the demonstration, I, I just want to keep here the demonstration for completeness, but uh, let us skip to the composition of the angular. Oh, sorry. To the composition of the angular velocity. The angular velocity of frame i is equal the angular velocity of frame i minus one plus the relative angular velocities of i with respect to i minus 1. A composition as sum of vectors. Okay. We arrive at this equation after, so this equation. We arrive at this equation after that we start from the rotation, the composition of rotation matrices. And then we apply the time derivative, we make some computation, and we arrive at this uh, result. We are not going to, 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 to make the, the, the computations right now. They are not complex from the conceptual aspect, because we just have to implement the time derivative of rotation matrices, and then to represent with respect to uh, the notation that we want to use. Now, what have we done? Well, now we are able to we are we are uh, we are able to to propagate linear and angular velocities along the structure, but there is still something that uh, is not related to the joint. Well, this guy here. is uh, the angular velocity of one link with respect to the previous one expressed uh, as a physical quantity, so an angular velocity. Now, I do want to uh, 
write it down as a function of the angular velocity of the joint. Okay, this is my, my purpose, and the same from the linear velocity. And this is something that uh, we will continue uh, in next, uh, in next um, lesson, because now you do have uh, another lesson, right? Uh, which one? Ah, well, okay, there are two different classes, so both of you. Okay, let me just uh, finish the, the concept. Because the concept is, okay, I have those two equations that represent the way the angular velocity and the linear velocity of frame I minus one propagate on frame I when I do know the relative angular and linear velocities and uh, this is the effect of the disk not the, the radial the, 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 the radial velocity now i need to specify this and this for rotational and prismatic joint if i have a rotational joint this is very very easy and this is one of the benefits of the denied tartan convention. The angular velocity of one frame with respect to the previous one is always around the z-axis and the amplitude is the velocity of the joint. This is very convenient because from the symbolic notation aspect it's very easy, okay? If I have a prismatic joint, uh, prismatic joint uh, is uh, a linear motor, well, I have uh, a linear displacement between two links. Clearly, the angular velocity of the second one is the same as the first one. Okay? So it's zero. But I'm able to specify these terms for rotational and prismatic joint. Now, dual uh, benefit of the Navitartaben convention. The linear velocity of the original frame I with respect to I minus one is uh, aligned with Z and the amplitude is the velocity of the prismatic joint. This is uh, the, 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 the dual of this one. The linear velocity, well, it's always the linear velocity of the head of the disk. Okay? It's a cross, a cross uh, uh, vector. So now I can rewrite those two equations for rotational and for prismatic joint. I do have the instrument to build the geometric Jacobi. And this is something that we will do the, tomorrow morning. Okay, any question? Because now is is twelve o'clock. Any question on what we have uh, done today? And see you tomorrow then.